A little trivia, I did my nails because I thought he was gonna propose to me, but he didn't. And another trivia behind that is that he was actually gonna propose to me, but his annulment at the time wasn't out yet, so he couldn't. Uh, but he had the ring already, so the feeling was mutual. I was right. So let's talk about love and the beautiful little moments in between. Um, so yeah, I actually, this isn't, whoa, it's heavy, but I was gonna say, this isn't huge enough to have all of my memories, but how did we meet and how did it start? Uh, people already read stuff or read stuff. Of course, I have a very special way of telling it. So yeah, all about us. Okay, so we met, our first, first date was, I met him at Ed Sashang, the heat, and he was outside. It's so funny because I remember that day so well. I was wearing a black, dress from Club Monaco and a red tweed jacket. Why was it red? Uh, there was actually, there's actually a trivia there because I saw him long ago and it was at uh, Gaudi in Fort and that was like, oh, I don't know, 2000 something, but really, really long ago. And I remember, I was like, who is he? Because he looked like really dignified, dignified in a weird way because he was wearing chanelas and shorts. but. I remember I was wearing red because of the song that was playing in the restaurant, Lady in Red. And that's why it also became our first dance because it meant so much. And that's why to complete the fantasy, I wore red the first time I met him. He loves writing letters. So I always keep like a collection of all of his letters. And he really like, you know, when we travel, he would buy cards secretly and keep them and write on them when there's a special occasion. And our very first travel together was actually not Paris. We went to San Francisco. We would take lots of pictures. I have lots of pictures. I wish I saved all. But I have pictures here from our trips. Yes, this was from one of our first trips. He was hesitant to do stuff like that before when I met him. He was a little bit different and stiff. Maybe because he was, you know, used to the whole imaging of a politician probably. Although he was super normal, but I feel like he was able to, he'd always say, do mundane and be able to enjoy the small moments and smell the flowers. That's what I brought into his life. So he kind of loosened up. So like, it is so important to share moments with each other, especially because we're both busy. I mean, pre-pandemic, of course, we would go out. We were able to travel. I mean, look at this box, like so many memories. Made We bought this book all about us. This is so personal. Like, it's so funny. Like, this is over coffee, but this has to be in my vault. The three things that your friends like about your partner. So he loves me, he's funny, he's down to earth, beautiful, popular, young. Three people you suddenly felt distance from when you fell in love with your your partner, all his ex, <laughs> my mom, my dad. Anyway, we mga ganyan kami. And it's so important to have these moments because these are like lasting moments. And I feel this is a really good foundation with your, your partner to just, you know, sit down, have a cup of coffee and talk like friends, tell him everything. I mean, I'm not sure that if this is gonna work for everyone because we were totally brutally honest, but this happened over a cup of coffee. And now I have this book that's gonna be part of my will that it has to be in a vault one day because it's so personal. I can't believe I just showed that. Please do not get this book. It's too much. So I have a notebook in the kitchen and I jot down all of the information I get from Cheese while we're having coffee because he's just like a, a encyclopedia or Google. You could ask him anything and he knows. History, medicine, laws, stuff like that. Taxes, what you need to do, mga ganyan. I definitely have those moments that we just sit and talk. And yeah, I have a notebook because sometimes it's overload of information. Well, our first date, well, we met, um, we were set up by Tita Miriam, was in heat. But our first, first date after that, I think the in place was Cav. And I remember there was this delicious tapa in front of me, but I was so fixated on my lipstick and not ruining it that I couldn't eat anything. I was so hungry when I got home, but 
it was really nice. He was just himself, and there was just no pretension, so it was nice. So our most memorable trip would be in Paris. It was memorable to me because it was my first time to go to Paris. I wasn't allowed by my parents to go to Paris first and foremost because they thought that I wasn't mature enough and ready and it was, you know, being very independent. So I wasn't allowed and when I was allowed, I wanted to save that trip and really make sure that if I go to Paris, it'll be with someone that I would end up with. So yeah, this was a Notre Dame. He took my picture. This was my first picture with the Eiffel Tower. This is at Versailles and this was the Louvre. Um, I think it's so precious because I don't have that in my phone anymore. I don't know what camera I was... But that was our first trip. A little trivia, I did my nails because I thought he was going to propose to me, but he didn't. And another trivia behind that is that he was actually going to propose to me, but his annulment at the time wasn't out yet, so he couldn't. Uh, but he had the ring already, so the feeling was mutual. I was right. A romantic date pre-pandemic would be get out of town and you know go on a really nice drive with him. He loves driving um, and I also love being the passenger because I love listening to music and he loves listening to music and we just be there cruising and I don't know maybe go to Tagaytay probably, go to Baguio. Now I think the best is when we're home because we feel safe, we're chill, I can wear slippers and when we're just talking, talking, listening to music, having wine, having coffee. Best thing about it for both worlds is that we really do enjoy each other's company. So I said this before, I'm not really a good cook. Actually, I'm actually a good cook. I'm just, it's not my thing. But he is such a good cook and he loves to cook. Even if it's just corned beef, he'll make it gourmet. But he does the best paella. He also does the best adobo flakes on top of rice. But my favorite of all is, it's kind of silly, but he loves to fry, like deep fry the fat around the steak. And I sometimes have that. He puts, oh yes, and his Japanese fried rice is the best. And he would put the fat on top of the rice, making me salivate. But yeah, he's the best when it comes to Japanese food too. So yeah, well, what do I do for him? I give him love, loyalty, affection, words of affirmation. I also, my language is love is giving. I love giving gifts. What else? Make sure the house is clean. Make sure everything's in place. The dishes are right. Um, but I'm also his sous chef, so I'm always beside him when he's cooking. Um, but when, of course, when I'm eating, I have to concentrate. Cheese, I mean, of course I love to shop, but Cheese loves to sit down in parks or in restaurants and just chill. Before, when I was younger, I didn't really appreciate that because I was always on the go, you know, running out of time, blah, blah. But now I really do appreciate that because you get to sit there and again, smell the, the flowers and enjoy the moment. And we love doing that. What I love about Cheese when we travel is he always has an itinerary. I don't know if I have his itinerary, but he always has this schedule and everything's in place so all you have to do is show up and you have a schedule already okay today we're gonna go here we're gonna go there we never do like tour guides we like to discover stuff on our own you know get lost kind of and i i don't i'm not afraid when it's cheese when i'm beside my house but what else do i have here i have oh pictures Listen trips. Oh, this is the time that we went. We had the, our first Halloween, and I don't know what I did. I killed him, and I, I had a vampire bite. He also had the same. Well, that was my prosthetics. Um, yeah, more pictures from Paris. So this was from Father Orbos and Bishop Bastes, Father Joseph. This was on our wedding, and during the ceremony. He said that these are chopsticks. They have to be together. If you have one, you can't use one. So they always have to be together. And they wrote the time that we got married or said I do, which is 5.15. So Cheese and I, we try to say a little prayer every time it's 5.15 for the both of us. And yeah, so I kept it. I actually have to have it framed. But this is very sweet and I'm very sentimental about those things. Um, yeah, just letters, like letters that he would give. Sometimes when I'm abroad, he'd send me letters too. Diba? Ito pa nung bago kami. Love Marie Ong Pao ko. Fold back. Kaya mo naman yung mga letters niya. Ang cheesy. Cheesy. 
um, super cute, super, super cute. Ayan. Yes, he does. He writes me letters all the time. Every, and look, oh, I have every anniversary. Every time he'll write me a letter. He also wrote me a book. Can you imagine? Pero yung mga iba midaya. I, L, O. Pero usually, he'll write me like the whole leather notebook and he'd write me how he's feeling. I'm blessed actually that I have somebody. So I have like three thick books. Mga edited edition, cheese edition books. He'll profess his love for me. The other one would be what to do, who to call, if something were to happen to him. Even numbers of like the plumber, stuff like that because he does all these things. So I really feel secure and yeah, so it's very, very sweet of him to do that. Oh my God, I still have yung self-administered questionnaires for, this is from you know when you get married you have to go to a counseling we totally failed and you know it's so funny because when you went to this one we ended up uh, not talking to each other after and they're just like do you want me to have a separate like a private session Ganyan. but uh we were able to fix that i, I think it was also because you know we're both so different similar i was younger spoiled and not exposed to the world. He has been in the world for a little bit longer than me. So we just had different views. But um, now, we're perfect. Getting married to my husband, I, I also kind of got married to his twins. So this is a collection of all of the letters that I received from them as well. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, and, and I have stuff here from when they were kids. Wait, this is special. So I, this is when I think they were four. This is from Chessie and this was from Kino. And I like to keep that all. They really make nice cards. Sorry, I'm going to ko, but I think it's sweet. They have like this. They have like this. They have like Happy birthday, Tito Heart! Mm, cute, cute. This is very touching. Oh, Kino's gonna kill me though. I don't know, I don't know. It's so cute. I guess to just, you know, wrap things up, I would advise people to, aside from being madly in love with one another, you marry your best friend and how important it is to talk to each other. Because of course, it's, you know, stages in life. Um, you're super in love with each other. You're super like, you can't get off each other. But there comes a time that, you know, you have to talk because sometimes, I mean, I, of course I have my friends, of course he has his friends, but you also have to be a friend to each other. And by developing your trust and your relationship and adjusting with the different chapters and phases of you know you being with your partner for a really long time, you have to be really comfortable with the person and talk to each other. And it, it does wonders, I feel like, for married people especially. Not every day you're into like lovey-dovey. I mean, I, I, I feel that, that way. But sometimes I just need to talk. Can we, I need to talk to someone about whatever. And he's there. I really do appreciate like quiet times and times where we can talk, have a cup of coffee, and just talk. Talk and talk and talk. And it never gets old. It's always new and it's refreshing in a relationship. So this has been Heart. Cheers!